Hi everybody, this is Jenny Lyles. Welcome to Out of My Mind. Today we're going to talk about the dynamic that we see when somebody tells the family or the business or the friendship circle or the church's secret. I'm calling this ousting the secret teller. Why the person who reports abuse gets banished. If you have been abused by a family member, a friend in your close friendship group, a leader or a member in your religious group, or a boss or co-worker in a workplace, you have probably experienced the pain of attempting to tell or warn others in the group about the behavior of your abuser, only to have the group ice you out tell you confidently that what you're describing didn't happen and that besides you're a horrible person to make the accusation. I'm going to walk you through why this dynamic happens and at the very end I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can deal with this particular thing. Your family, your friendship group, and your workplace are all human systems. In each, every person has some role to play the system can bend a little to let someone new in or to release someone old, but for the most part, it really prefers that there's no change at all. And this is true of pretty much every human system. So your abuser, and we're going to call your abuser Uncle Bob or Cousin Jolene, is part of that system. On some level, the system already knows about Uncle Bob's or Jolene's bad behavior. However, he adds something of value to the system. Maybe he's a source of income. He might be someone with a great deal of power of influence. Jolene may be extremely generous to many people with her time, her money, her expertise. Or Bob or Jolene may just be somebody that somebody else with power and influence protects for their own reasons because they're fond of them. Now, let me go back to something here. The system already knows about Bob or Jolene. There is probably already a whisper campaign along the lines of, watch out for Bob, watch out for Jolene going on. The whisper campaign is started by those who are scared of Bob or Jolene, but even more scared of attempting to get Bob out of the system. So they instead try to communicate with whispers and hints and nudges so that anyone new to the system or newly a target of Bob or Jolene's attentions can understand what's going on and they keep their own heads down, and they avoid Bob or Jolie as best they can to prevent damage to themselves. The system has built Bob in. There are people who are assigned to watch Bob. There are others assigned to manage the damage that Bob or Jolene causes. None of these assignments are written down anywhere. In a workplace, you're not going to find um, Jack is Bob's keeper on a resume anywhere. But it's a real role and it's an important role in any family system that there are going to be people who manage people whose behavior is out of line. When it comes time to it, it's always Tom that pulls Bob aside and asks him to knock it off. It's always Beth that handles those who have been harmed by Bob and convinces them that it wasn't that bad. And that's just the way he is. And it doesn't matter what kind of abuse Jolene or Bob engaged in, whether it was sexual, physical, emotional, or material, the pattern is the same. Jolene harms someone, either inside or outside the group, and the group closes ranks to protect him while attempting to minimize the damage. Because the system is not actually protecting Bob, the system is actually attempting to protect itself because change, any change, is a threat to the system. And the bigger the change, the bigger the threat. So, 
Bob, or his female counterpart, Jolene, has done something horrible to you. Something that is wrecking your life. It's giving you nightmares. You're looking around corners, jumping at shadows. Something that has you calling up a therapist and asking to see them as soon as possible because you're afraid you're losing your mind and you can't handle what Bob or Jolene is doing. And you go to a therapist or a friend or a family member or a church member, usually someone outside Bob or Jolene's system, and that one person with the best intentions in the world tells you what Bob is doing is abuse and you need to report it or to confront it or in some way deal with it depending on the circumstances. They in one way or another are telling you that Jolene's or Bob's abuse needs to come out of the closet. So you think about it and you remember how kind Beth is. Remember Beth? She's the one whose role in their system is to protect the system from the harm of Jolene or Bob does. You go to her, her warm, kind person, and you say, Bob did this to me or Jolene did that to me. And you might even have dates and people who remember pieces of it and that they were a part of. You're expecting Beth, who's so very warm and kind, to immediately be outraged on your behalf. You're expecting her to jump right up and confront Bob or Jolene. Instead, she starts asking you a bunch of questions. She starts managing you. At first, she might try to convince you that what he did wasn't abuse or it was an accident, a one-time thing. Are you sure you didn't misunderstand? Oh, I'm sure he didn't mean it that way. Oh, hon, he must have been very tired. I'm sure that would never happen again. When that doesn't work, she'll start working on your credibility. Softly at first, and then as you stand your ground a little more firmly. You must be misremembering. I'm positive he wouldn't do anything like that. Are you sure you didn't dream up the whole thing? Next, she's probably going to try some victim blaming. Remember, she's protecting the system, not you. By this time, the rumor mill, probably fed by Beth, has done its work, so you'll probably get these lines from lots of people in the group you and Bob or Jolene share. As you listen to these examples, keep in mind that some of Bob's or Jolene's victims, the one that Beth and her helpers are addressing, are children. So this person that they're addressing that I'm about to say these things to might be a child. You were drinking, weren't you? You should know better than to not lock the shower door when you're showering. Why were you dressed that way? If only you hadn't confronted him about that, everything would have been okay. You must have made her angry. Finally, when nothing else works, Beth and the system she protects will flat out accuse you of lying, even if the evidence is good, even if Everyone knows that Bob or Jolene not only is capable of doing the things you're accusing them of, but that they've actually done it again. You're lying. Stop stirring up trouble. Why did you have to make a big deal about it? Beth and the rest who are accusing you of lying and exaggerating and causing trouble are called flying monkeys in abuse recovery circles after the flying monkeys in the Wizard of Oz that swarmed after Dorothy and her companions when they tried to end the abuses of the Wicked Witch of the West. They will attempt to hound you back into silence, and if that doesn't work, they'll attempt to hound you out of the group. Systems with abusers in them, families, friendship groups, religious organizations, businesses, and even larger organizations, are remarkably sophisticated in the ways they protect abusers. Society has whole systems built up around protecting abusers from consequences. Many abuse victims, somewhere in the process of attempting to let their group know what Bob or Jolene do, go public. Attempting to protect themselves, they may notify the police, human resources, or some other authority. 
At this point, the system will go into overdrive to protect them from the threat of change that you represent. They will make you into a villain. They will dig through your past to find every single thing you have ever done in an attempt to discredit you. Let's pretend for a moment that your name is Alex, short for Alexis or Alexander. They might say, you know, Alex has always lied to get what they need. Remember that time when they were seven? Or Alex likes sex. They had at least five partners last year. I bet they just changed their mind. Or I hear Alex has a drinking problem. They were at the bar last week chugging down margaritas all night. If I remember right, Alex has been in and out of inpatient mental health wards four or five times in the last couple of years. Almost every single person who reports abuse done to them goes through some variation of this process with at least some of the people who share a relationship with Bob or Jolene. It is a fact of life that going public about abuse or reporting it to authorities almost always comes with the loss of a relationship you thought was supportive. So what can you do? First, you need to be aware of the flying monkeys phenomenon. Know that at least a couple of the people you thought would support you won't. Plan for that and for the support you'll need to replace those relationships as best you can by building a relationship with a therapist or a counselor or a minister or a friend or a family member outside the abusive system. You might have to try several times because in every system there are abusers and sometimes you will run into a helping professional that is more invested in helping abusers than helping the abused. So be aware of that. Second, you need to write everything down, and I mean everything. If you don't write well, record it on video or audio. It doesn't matter so long as you have a record. Write down the story of what Bob or Jolene did to you with as many dates and specifics as you can remember. You might want to get the assistance and support of a therapist while you do this because this is likely to be emotionally really, really hard. Write down how Beth and all the other flying monkeys in your system responded. Who had a duty to act and didn't? Did you have a teacher that didn't do anything? A boss, a coworker, a parent that didn't act to protect you? Make sure that little tidbit gets in there. Make the decision whether you think you have enough support and enough evidence to go to an authority and see the process through. Don't forget that your testimony is evidence. Lawyers are trained on how to find the truth in conflicting testimony. They know what liars do. They know how liars tell lies. So if you are telling the truth, you have a good shot at getting some justice. They're going to be able to convince a judge or a jury if you decide to proceed. This could happen. Make sure you have a solid support system that is ready to help you deal with the fallout of going public. And if you do decide to go through the legal route, make sure you have the support you need in the case that you aren't successful in your quest to get justice for yourself. Finally, whether or not you go to an authority, it is very likely that you will either be ousted by the system that is protecting Bob or Jolene, or that you will voluntarily choose to leave it. Strategize, kind of think through how you will deal with the situation in such a way that you are able to keep income coming in, that you'll still have support from friends and family, or a roof over your head, and take care of your physical and emotional needs and those of any dependents you might have that might be affected by this whole process. As you get further from the abusive person and the group surrounding them and protecting them, you might want to do some things to 
change this whole system of the way the world works. You might want to join a support group in person or online for survivors of abuse like the kind you suffered. You might want to advocate for others in similar situations, either formally or just through being a supportive person in the process. You could work to ensure that others understand how abusive systems protect abusers and help weed out other abusers from other systems. You could learn better interpersonal skills yourself so that the cycle of abuse you endured, especially if it was family abuse, ends with you. You are strong. You were right to come forward. Your feeling of betrayal is real because you were betrayed. You deserve safety and compassion and respect in your life. You deserve to like yourself and to build healthy relationships with others. None of it was ever your fault. Even if you did some things wrong, even if you weren't perfect in the situation, and you didn't deserve the abuse, no matter how many people told you differently. Take care of yourself now and always. I really hope this information helped you today. For more on relationships, including abuse, parenting, and other mental health and social justice topics, go to www.oomm.live. If you find my work meaningful and important, or you would like more opportunities to learn about how to improve your life, become a patron of my Patreon for a dollar or more a month at patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S. Thank you, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss any videos. See you later. Bye-bye.